Mason, you have claws. Should we declaw you? We're going to have a discussion about should you declaw cats or not. I have my own opinion, but I want to know your opinion. And I want to have a non-heated debate about cats being declawed or not. Isn't that cute? Would you declaw a kitten? That's the question here. But I don't want anyone fighting on this comment section of this video. Be respectful, be factual, and talk about your opinions and your experiences, especially your experiences. I want to hear people's experiences with declawing versus not declawing cats. Good morning, kitties. We're going to talk about declawing versus other methods to keep you guys from scratching up the furniture. I don't feel like I've mastered the concept of keeping the cats from scratching on things, but I'm a strong, uh, I'm strongly opposed to declawing cats. It rips out their soul. It kind of takes away some of their purpose and it makes them lazy and lethargic, I think. Now, these cats have their claws, but they look lazy and lethargic at the, men, at the moment. But if you watch our vlogs, you'll see that these cats are very active, and they're quite the character. So I think a cat's full character is, is maintained by not declawing the cats. I think that cats, I think you can reach a happy medium. You're going to lose a little bit, and your cats are going to gain a lot, and you're going to gain a lot by having cats that have their full personality and their full function. Cats with claws don't typically scratch people unless it's by accident. And if it's by accident, it's your fault because you set them up for failure, usually. Granted, there's a few times where a cat will just decide he wants to jump up on a person or wants to chase a fly or something. I, I've actually had my head cut open in the middle of the night when they were chasing a fly above my head, which I appreciate. I like that fact that I mean, a fly is not going to land on my head, but... Having gushing blood out of my head wasn't very charming. The, I yelled at the cat pretty loud, and he stayed away from me for about two days. I think it was this guy. It was dark, so I couldn't tell which one did it. Which one of you guys cut my head open? So yeah, a lot of you are going to say, hey, that's not worth it. I'm going to declaw my cat. And, and I, I propose to you, don't even get a cat. Um, unless it's already been declawed and you're going to adopt that cat, that's great. That's the way to go. But I would not get a kitten and have it declawed because you are going to see the change in the demeanor of that cat. And it's very depressing. It's, it's very disappointing. Uh, and I was, uh, after that experience that I had with declawing my two kittens back many years ago, I quickly learned that that's not okay. I'll never do it again. And um, Karen's pretty opposed to that idea, but... Um, I understand cats' attitudes and behaviors and and their full character is maintained by keeping their claws. And look at that. I trim their claws. That's one thing I do. Here's a couple other ideas. Um, trim their claws every week with just a single or a simple fingernail clipper. Hey, now, you're chewing on me, and that's not, that's not okay. Why am I letting you do that? I don't know, because he actually doesn't bite. And I think this is a way of teaching him that if he bites too hard, I tell him. It's, it's what a mother cat does to her kittens. And that's how animals learn behavior that's appropriate. Is You can't just withdraw and not give him a chance to try. <laughs> a lot of you are going to disagree, but he barely touches my fingers with his mouth. And, and I like that because it teaches him that he can't bite on the other cats either. Anyway, we're talking about declawing. And I would never declaw a cat again. Uh, there, there's ways to counteract their need or their desire to scratch up your furniture. Number one is give them a lot of options like other toys, things to scratch on, scratching posts of different kinds, different materials. I have all sorts of scratching posts. The worst one is the cardboard one, but it's their favorite. The, way I, the reason I say it's the worst one is that the cardboard scratching posts are um, messy. And this guy even chews it up. 
which is, he's a chewer. But he doesn't chew anything else in the house at all. Just simply cardboard. Which is fine, unless I have a new box from Amazon that I haven't opened. Then he helps me open that. Actually, he doesn't. I'm just kidding. But um, Scratching posts, have those available. And then sprays. There's different sprays. And I'm not endorsing any particular products. I'm not even showing you any products. I'm just showing you uh, cats preening themselves and napping while I talk about it. Because they're just so cute like that. But yeah, I don't, I don't have any particular product that I would recommend. I've tried many different anti-scratching sprays for furniture. Um, there's some home remedies that you can come up with that sprays that you can put on your furniture. I think the most effective ones are the ones that stink the most. So when you spray your couch, your couch is going to have a smell to it. And so if you don't like all that, then go adopt a cat that does not have claws that has been previously declawed. And there's tons of them, believe me, at your local shelter. There's a lot of cats that have been declawed. Also, don't get a kitten. If you don't like them scratching and biting, don't get a kitten. Because kittens have that in them, and you're going to have to teach them through daily and hourly routine. When they start to scratch on things, stop them. Oh, they're alerting. I wonder if Kate is here. Is Kate here? Do you hear something? <laughs> so, we have a watchdog that doesn't... <laughs> she's a little old, and she doesn't hear things. So, there she is. Yes, yeah, you good girl. You. She's in pain today, because... It's bad weather, and she's got arthritis. You poor puppy. Uh, I feel so bad for you. You look like you're really in pain today. Yeah, but you're not much of a watchdog, are you? Huh? You're just my old pooch. But the cats are like watchdogs. Mason even growls if there's someone at the door that he that that they're not coming in very quickly, and he doesn't know who it is. Mason will actually growl. And you're Mr. Clean today, aren't you? Hmm? Was you Mr. Clean? Yeah, and I touched you, now you have to clean it off. And I even have clean hands. I haven't stuck my fingers in the butter. Yeah, you're cute. What else have I done to keep the cats from scratching? Uh, make that sound, yeah. <laughs> as soon as they scratch on furniture. But make sure you wait and see if it's furniture or a scratching post. The worst thing you can do is make that sound too fast and then they quit scratching on the scratching post. What else do we do to keep these guys from scratching? Um, I've taught Sadie to chase them off if they're scratching on the couch. Sadie will actually chase them off and uh, chase them down the hall and they'll run away. That helps a lot if you can teach your dog how to do that. But the problem is when they scratch on their scratching posts, she used to chase them off from there too. And you don't want to discourage that. You want to actually encourage it with um, maybe, uh, well, definitely with catnip. So attract them to the things you want them to scratch and dissuade them from the things you do not want them to scratch. Right, Mason? Mason, you tell us. How are we going to keep cats from scratching? What I really want to know is from you guys in the comments. What things do you do to keep your cats from scratching on the furniture? I feel like we've been partially successful because all the new furniture here is looking pretty is looking very good. They don't even touch it even though they we allow them to sleep on it, but they cannot scratch the furniture upstairs and they don't. And it's a combination of things that we do that keeps them from scratching. Uh, that I feel like we're partially successful. And I, I say partially successful because I think they still do scratch on the beds, the bed frames, as you can see. Yeah, but that's been over the years. That's, that's not brand new. My challenge to you is to tell us what additional things you do to keep your cat from scratching on the furniture. This is an anti-scratch campaign. Right, guys? Trimming their nails is one of the biggest things, I think. you got to do it every week. I think boredom is a big thing that, that uh, encourages cats to scratch on your furniture. Just because they're simply, they, they got pent-up energy. you got to play with them quite a bit.
I think that helps quite a bit. And and when I have windows that they can look out and I encourage them to be up in the windows, they can be looking outside and kind of living vicariously by watching the creatures outside. And uh, But plenty of playtime, and it doesn't have to be hours and hours, not even an hour. I play with them, like, occasionally, maybe every once in a while when I walk through the room. I'll, I'll do something fun and uh, throw toys, play fetch, whatever. Whatever turns their crank. Yeah, I can see i got to trim your nails. They're getting a little sharp. It's been a week. Yeah. Maybe I'll do a video on how to trim their nails. It's pretty simple. You, you just you don't fight them. You want to sit with them and uh, do it ever so quietly. And don't make a big production out of it. Get in, get it done, and get out. And if they... If they're a little wryly about it, then just do one nail at a time. Catch them every five or ten minutes and hit another nail. And these guys let me do them all. Because ever since they're kittens, they just don't have a choice. And I don't let them fight me because I hold them down in my lap. Um, basically, <laughs> he doesn't like when I get a hold of He's like, he wants to be in control. To adopt a cat is to adopt claws, especially when you get a kitten. That's just my opinion. Um, if you are, well, in the comments below, you guys can also have a discussion, but be be um, respectful of each other. But you can have a discussion about whether to declaw a cat or not. And But tell us reasons and give us uh, really good uh, ideas of why you think you should or should not declaw a cat don't don't just demand that people be one way or the other i mean it's a free world people can have the right to declaw cats and in some countries it's illegal which is interesting which countries is it illegal to declaw a cat maybe i'm wrong maybe there isn't such a thing but i think that is a, a fact actually let me know what you guys think people have different experiences and knowledge bases uh, as it re pertains to cat claws, claws and declawing cats. And uh, maybe even a veterinarian who's done declawing can tell us their opinion on that and what they think it does to the demeanor of cats. I think it destroys their demeanor. But more so than that, um, there are there is the other side of the coin where cats will not get adopted if everyone expects them to be declawed. Well, then that means more cats will be put down. So is it more humane to declaw a cat and keep it alive? Um, I'm not an expert on, on this. I just want to know you, your guys' experience, but don't troll on each other in the sake of trying to make your point. Because if you make a point while you're being a troll or name-calling, then your point just became totally pointless. Nobody's going to listen to your viewpoint if you're being demanding, one-sided, and mean to other people. You need to make your case with facts and with experiences. And so tell us your experience of declawing or not declawing. I'm sure there's successes on both sides. And uh, point in case, when I declawed two cats, two kittens, it was the only way we are going to have kittens around with, child, with small children and with daycare kids around. Otherwise, those two cats, they were farm, farm cats. They were rescued. Uh, otherwise, they would not have been adopted. And they may have died in the elements or been taken to a shelter and possibly even euthanized. So uh, I guess at the time, I made the best decision I could make with what we had. and uh, But with my experience of what I saw that did to cats' behaviors, uh, I'm not selfish enough to destroy a cat's demeanor and behavior for the sake of having a cat that's my opinion but again that doesn't mean that that's what i think you should do it's all relative to each person and each animal that they adopt look at that paw you never use your claws in a bad way i would never declaw a cat again i absolutely refuse to ever declaw a cat i did when i first had two cats when I was younger and I saw how it changed their demeanor I had a cat prior to that my first cat in college was uh declawed already and she 
she was had a fine demeanor it didn't matter to her but to see what happens with kittens after you get them declawed that it just kind of rips their soul out they they kind of i don't know it takes the cat element out of them they yeah it might be good for your furniture and yes i have one couch or one chair love seat that's totally destroyed and Karen's not very happy about that, and I'm not very happy about that, but um, they aren't wrecking the new furniture that we got because we've taken great measures to chase them off anytime they try. We've also put different um, products that you can put on your spray onto your couch to keep them from scratching, and we also offer a lot of other scratching posts. So cat scratching of furniture even in our household, I shouldn't say even in our household, especially in our household, has been a problem, but now it isn't. And I still don't feel like I've mastered uh, the method to keep them from scratching things like bed frames and couch corners. There's a billion tricks out there you can YouTube, but I'm not going to even make a video on how to keep them from scratching because I don't think I've got that mastered yet. But our new furniture upstairs, if you watch our vlogs, you'll see that the new couch and chairs upstairs uh, that we've had now for a year and a half have not been touched by the cats. So I'm actually very happy about that. But they still will scratch bed frames like they destroyed the underside of both of Caitlin's beds here and at the lake. Um, they tear the lining out and they crawl up inside there. So, And they've scratched the corner of this bed and... Um, so I can't claim that, there it is, so I can't claim that I've made these cats scratch free, but I'm still not going to declaw them, and I guess I figure the benefit that they give me in life outweighs the benefit that my couch gives me in life. I can still sleep on that couch, and we don't entertain, I mean, if, if you're having people over and you want your house to look really pristine and prime, then probably don't get a cat because I think declawing a cat is uh, not a compromise. I think a compromise is to work really hard to give them the proper toys and scratching posts that they need and uh, keep them in the room that you want them to be in or this, the part of the house that you want them to be in. Do some training when they're kittens. you got to be around to stop them anytime they scratch on furniture. And then encourage them to scratch on their toys. And if I hear scratching sounds, I don't make that sound right away. Because they're probably scratching on their scratching posts. And you don't want to teach them that they can't scratch anything. Because that's not going to be uh, reality. Cats will scratch when they want to scratch. But uh, they want to exercise their claws you got to give them plenty of toys and scratching posts to do that with. I don't know. What I'm really asking for is your opinions, because there's going to be more than one way. It's a, co a conglomeration of actions and resources and tools that you'd have to implement to keep your cats from scratching things in your house. And the bottom line is they're going to pick a few things that they're going to scratch, and they're going to wreck it up one day when you're at work um and so if you get a cat and you're not going to declaw the cat it is the risk you take and i figure couches are replaceable uh and like i showed you our new furniture well i didn't show you but you can see in our blogs all the time our furniture upstairs in the blue furniture has zero scratches on it and yet they could scratch. I guess they haven't scratched anything recently other than my bed frame. So there is a risk to it. But if you uh, read the comments below what all the other people are writing for comments, for ideas, I'm soliciting your ideas on how to keep your cats from scratching your furniture. Um, I've kind of mastered that, but not enough to make a how-to video. If you adopt a cat that's already been declawed, more power to you. I did the same thing in college. Uh, I was gone all the time. I was single. And uh, the cat that was in my apartment 
wasn't even allowed to be there, but I had them anyway. And because uh, I'm a rebel like that. And that was my first cat, and he, she was declawed, and she didn't wreck up anything. But um, yet she would get into my butter and lick my butter. You can't really, well, they say you can't teach a cat things. Yes, you can. But uh, I'm really asking in this video, what do you do to keep your cat from scratching up all of your belongings? Check out the video story about how I adopted this guy, Koho. And I also have a series, they're playlists. I have a playlist about Koho ever since we adopted him. Things that pertain just to him and his rescue. He was found under a, uh, under cars at a gas station. And then I have a playlist about Mason and how he showed up in our lives. Both cats were very sick. And they were kittens at an age of about six to eight weeks old. They were both very sick. We spent some money to nurse them back to health. Because all it took was some antibiotics and some water and some warm shelter and a lot of TLC. And within a week, the, both of these guys were all healed up and became ours. I love these cats. They give me a daily boost to my everyday uh, essence of being. They restore my soul. They restore my mind, my heart. And uh, they really give back tenfold just by being them they don't even well they know it i think they know that bestowing their love upon me is returned back to them so there you have it this is life with cats and the discussion of claws be nice to each other there you have it if you like this video i recommend you subscribe and check out our other videos i upload videos at least once or twice a week if not more pertaining to family, uh, life, and pets, both. And I do some how-to videos, which is totally off the wall. All of a sudden, one day, I'm uploading how to fix something. It has nothing to do with cats. But um, we have fun here. I basically want to solicit your, your experiences and your opinions, but it's very important that I, that you, uh, thanks for doing that right now. <laughs> Thank you for watching Frosty Life. That was cheesy. <laughs>